Good evening and welcome to the Tibet House Trust annual lecture. Uh, this year we have selected a very uh, interesting topic and uh, we had a lot of discussions in the office about how this topic might be seen by people who I live in the UK where we generally do not talk about death. Um, but I think we've been very encouraged after seeing the number of people who have registered to come. Maybe they'll be coming by in slowly. And we saw a lot of new names. And I think I'm seeing a few new faces as well. Um, we feel it's a very important topic. And... Uh, Generally, people, including me, uh, we are kind of more engrossed with how to live our lives <laughs> or with the activities that come between those two inevitable milestones in one's life, the birth and the death. <laughs> but um, we think Buddhism has a lot to help us, uh, empower us, we feel Buddhism has a lot to teach us, to empower us in influence, influencing uh, how we um, get by with these um, events in our life. And uh, luckily for us, uh, with the help of Jamyang Buddhist Center in London, we have the visit of uh, the Venerable Yande Rumbche here who, as you would have seen from the introduction that we gave, a highly learned Tibetan Rinpoche, someone who has excelled in the highest degrees that one can achieve in the Tibetan uh, Geluk tradition. And also, to make it more accessible, we have Geshe Ma, Kesan Wamula, who will help translate for Rinpoche here. Uh, so... Um, we hope uh, we'll, you will uh, find uh, today's uh, talk interesting. And if you have any doubts, you, we have uh, given you the opportunity for 45 minutes of question and answer session. We have initially kept uh, an hour and a half uh, for this uh, talk, 45 minutes for Rinpoche and translation by uh, and then 45 minutes for question and answer session. So uh, Namla, who's going to give you uh, <clears throat> why we are holding this event every year. So Namla, on the stage, please. Shindune, <laughs> And <laughs> It is a great pleasure to see quite a number of here. We were expecting slightly more because the registration was quite full up. Uh, but nevertheless, um, this is an annual lecture series that the Tibet House Trust has initiated since 2019. And the talk primarily was to share what the Tibetans can offer to the host community in the UK. Ever since the, when His Holiness was not able to travel, one of the main events that we have started to take was so that His Holiness's lifelong work that he has spent so many times and journeys throughout his life in the West and has created many friends, many connections. And we wanted to have a linkage 
so that the memories and also the context that His, His Holiness has cemented, not only in terms of Buddhism, but for Tibet, and also going forward, people who might still want to be interested in Tibetan affairs and Buddhism may continue. So one of the main uh, work that we are doing is to invite learned scholars of Tibetan who can continue the work of His Holiness the Dalai Lama for years to come, hopefully. Uh, the Tibet House Trust is a charity that is run by the Office of Tibet. We mainly work with the Central Tibetan Administration in education, in health, and in social development, and in the settlements. The work that we have done really mirrors the need and the aspirations of the Central Tibetan Administration. All the money that we raise, apart from audit fees and bank charges, we plow back 99.99% into the copper of the Central Tibetan Administration. So we feel quite proud that whatever the Office of Tibet is doing in terms of his work on the uh, trust is worthy and much appreciated by the Central Tibetan Administration. I just want to give a small, uh, oops, <laughs> sorry, small quote from the administration. And the previous Sikyong said, Tibet House Trust was born out of genuine need of the Tibetan community to survive and sustain and succeed in the exile. And his work on education, health, and culture needs of the Tibetan diaspora mirrors the aspirations of the Central Tibetan Administration. Tibet House Trust aids in the transformation of the Tibetan community in exile into a self-reliant and self-sufficient community stands unparalleled. And His Holiness also gracefully wrote to us, saying that the Tibet has trust has contributed a great deal to the overall development of the Tibetan community in exile with its education, scholarship, and other development projects. I would therefore like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude. Thank you, His Holiness. Uh, really, Tibet House Trust functions as part of the Central Tibetan Administration, and today's lecture is really to develop what His Holiness has left in the West. And with this, I, before not talking too much, I want to ask Rinpoche to share the most important talk for us today. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. So first of all, we would like to greet all of you with Tashitele, the Tibetan greeting. Mm. Um, uh, and we would like to thank everyone for making this visit possible, for making this occasion possible, for everyone who uh, organized it. The <laughs> 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 Karachayung 
就是低阳低交落的交中的，呃，日雄的这档虚位那里，嗯，阳明的大柱的这档的虚位那里，阳明的偏位的上的南路的七号档八度了。大当当，起我的八度山的南军文政街当起我的，的看台是内陆的山，的角落的上路的那个，诶 ，background 不，角落的的，角中的去寻找这些，难不得。Sorry, I have a hard time hearing you, but she, but um, anyway, so, uh, with regard to the topic today, which is death, the transition of death, and then the, the intermediate state. Well, Rimshi will talk about this, but instead of just giving you like a, a straight explanation, of course, giving you uh, an explanation of the topic itself, but Rimshi also would like to provide you with a background so you have some sense how this particular topic fits into uh, other ideas, other concepts. And so, yeah, so to provide you, of course, with the material, with the information, but uh, together... And together with this background, like the Buddhist background, Um, <coughs> 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 <coughs>
，讲到新闻部的西游记，滴农小年去去过去，呃，永远不滴塞不起来嘞。新闻部的西游记呢，你村里的细节就做这滴大要嘞。另一滴讲了，呃，村里的呃，土民中公司那里多么大设计，呃，第一是凶。嗯，往的些位那里，那样去路的往的些位那去路了，那样农学呢去路太，你讲了，啊，去路的特别的，讲的，叔叔的教练的叔叔的这些些呢，是吧？叔叔的地多跟田，吃上的叔叔的鱼不低，上不低，买不起，叔叔地多的，地我农田的，你看到教具设备，叔叔的教练进了怕都是教具低。但农学的太有，农学的去路那个。Yes. 嗯。Now with regard to the West, on the other hand, well, the religious system, the spiritual system, ah,、uh, you find in the West is mainly faith-based. So it's a system where you put your hand, you put your, you put your salvation in the hands of a god. Of a of an entity, an external entity that is external to yourself, and on top of that, you have a very strong、um, scientific tradition, the, the the tradition of science, which is mainly concerned with the external world, with the nature of phenomena in the external material world. Hmm. So, um, the English. 嗯，日常年纪、教育的那档，明朝有不一定讲了。嗯，米子是呢，呃，米子说是哪个了？米子是吧？米子 ，life， 米子，米子是呢，看得起了是个意思。你大那些，呃，米子，你不得看意思，对吧？看得起了米子，对你是个意思，但对那你不米子，你不得看意思。听我这些讲了，呃，到底吃我的。请勿收钱，原则来讲，这第一，零条当当，第三当当的，呃，说明到你的用的，下个月是来下手。Therefore, with regard to these different traditions we find in the East and in the West, well, they bring up different questions. Um, so first of all, what is life? What is what does it mean to be alive? What is life? What is the essence? What is the heart, or what is the essence of life? What is the meaning of life? So these are important questions, important issues, and they are different. The answers to these questions are different, different from the point of view of the Eastern tradition and the Western tradition. Hmm. Ah, um, 下手的人从啊，记得，比比那年呃，南北给的山东的。徐伟那里的雄鹿，徐伟那里以往的建的徐伟呢，米子米子所设的米子设的，看得起了谁的？老弟啊，其他米子设的，说算不起了，哥，算不起了。看得起了我的几个，我的那米子给宁波开的，是那有的讲了，米子给宁波的这些家用的讲了，那西的团建的团呢，这些家伙嘛的，米子给宁波的这些家用的讲了，上路的。一些当看得上路的，呃，原定去长乐山的托呢，这些就用过来。西屯镇，看最有为那里上路难过了，理解的，朝我当，你吃不起没为呢？你没自己你不得长乐山嘛的意思。啊，那些没自没自己人当时的，没自己，呃，你不是的，呃，让别人也的，没自己你不当，没自己人当了这个嘛的。看得起数越为过分的，起数的你不得，就心了偏不当。啊，叔叔看到月色当，叔叔出色，叔叔出年去设计，去做当，叔叔的娘子叫我吃的设计，这，嗯，你去做，你的家庭思维能咱们的全用的去做，上面的，辛苦去些，哦，辛苦的去些呢，怕兄弟学的，人品的小啊，上班难打去，上班难打的多呢，你上班难打的上面的工农咋了？第一，工农第一多呢，你人啊，你才觉得样。我们记得听不起钱的，我的你这个人当时跟这几个托尼我的，钱的送给我的是吧 ？Yes. Now talking specifically about the Eastern tradition, and among the different、uh, spiritual traditions, well, the Buddhist tradition. What is life? 
So when you ask the question, what does life mean? Excuse me. It basically means to be alive. So in terms of this issue of life, well, to be alive. But what is the essence of one's life? Well, the essence of one's life is not seen, or the importance or what is essential in one's life is not seen to be what is external to ourselves. That does not, that's not in the forefront. It's not just the external environment, not just the uh, material objects around us, but the focus of our life, the, the, the most important aspect of our life is our own mind. To find inner satisfaction, that is considered to be extremely important. So to find inner well-being and contentment, not necessarily dependent on external matter. And with respect to the value of human life, the value of our existence being alive, well, it's not just one's own, it's not just directed at our own benefit, but at the, at the benefit of others. That is considered to be extremely important, the benefit of others. So now when we live, when we live our lives, we live our lives with other people, in communities, in society. And taking on, taking personal responsibility for the welfare of others is considered to be very important with a sincere motivation, with a sincere intention. So that is the mental motivation, the mental driving force, which then controls our actions of body and speech or our physical and verbal actions. Mm. Uh, Someone Therefore, from the point of view of this tradition, how do we make our life meaningful? Well, to make our life meaningful or to give meaning to our life, it's important to have this sincere motivation to be of benefit to others. So whatever uncommon, whatever, whatever unique qualities we may have, whatever unique abilities we have, and so forth, we take personal responsibility for the welfare of others and use them, use them for the benefit of others. Use them in such a way that we work towards the happiness and the well-being of others by uh, developing love and compassion for others. Mm. Uh, uh now, when we talk about, in particular, the Eastern tradition, and of the Eastern tradition, the Indian tradition, which, of course, uh, is the root of the Tibetan tradition. So here, speaking about, in particular, Tibetan Buddhism, in the sense of what is the kind of attitude when it comes to our own life? And not just that, how about death and then the intermediate state? Considering all these aspects, and in particular the intermediate state, which right now we cannot see, well, all that relates back to our consciousness. Rinpoche earlier on mentioned mind, thoughts. So consciousness, 
consciousness, our inner world, the inner world of our consciousness. So consciousness is a continuum, a continuum uh, which includes our thoughts, our feelings, and so forth. And so uh, we spend a lot of time to understand what is the nature of this consciousness, what is its function, which causes and conditions give rise to our mind, to our consciousness. This entity that continues on forever, it's impossible to stop consciousness, to stop the continuum of consciousness. It goes on forever. And so it's this consciousness that undergoes death, that under undergoes the intermediate state, the one that lives, lives through our life, and so forth. So it's this continuum of mind or consciousness. Mm. Yes. Yes. Chatan ま、え、で、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に、に
的，伊那样面子寄望的些呢，需要伊那寄望的寄望些，你个寄望伊那样面子寄给吃些的，么寄望这样面子给吃些的，多都买不来，你个寄不来。Yes. But when we talk about just this life, well, birth is one aspect, is one part of this life, and death is one part of this life. And so, in particular, death is something we can't avoid. It's uh. It's unavoidable. Tomayachi,你那个孙不得了,人地界,你那个气候世界,你那个气候世界,你那个气候世界,你那个气候世界,你那个气候世界,你那个气候世界,你那个气候世界,你那个气候世界,你那个气候世界,你那个气候世界,
birth, death, intermediate state, and so on. Like an endless cycle, as it's described. So in the scriptures, they talk about a cyclic, they talk about cyclic existence and us being within cyclic existence, being this being of cyclic existence in the sense that we undergo these stages again and again, uh, birth, uh, death, intermediate state, and so forth. And in the Buddhist scriptures, in particular in the tantric scriptures, they say that these three stages we actually undergo on a daily basis uh, in a similar fashion. So there are these similar, there are these states that are similar to dying, intermediate state, death, intermediate state, and rebirth. When we fall asleep during the time of deep sleep, that's similar to death. And when we dream during the dream time, that is similar to the intermediate state. And then waking up, is similar to rebirth. So these stages, they're only similar to, they're not the, the, the same, but they're very similar in their working to death, intermediate state, and rebirth. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Number Nan 啊,東北那個地了,千萬不緊張,南西,幾多都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都都
Nietzsche, Lungiola, Pin, Chile, and Goro, and it triggered on Sinleni, Linsero, Chugitan, Chugit, Dilay in Gorda, and it Chu, Linsero, Chu, Tomba Latin, any Chu, Yunguidan, Chu Mamba Sava Latin, and Tin, and Loga Sagi, Joma Dilay in Goro, Tizan, Tomba Che, so Joma Sigi Tony de Sija, the kind of Tomba Ne, Chava Che, Chava Ne. Any Casuri Chatania to which I saw Tomba ne, Yandu, Sidemichaze, Chabe ne, ne dantine, never say, never the Anjibes in the Mandos and Gibi gave us it. Jimbashi Tony, near the Junigarida, Kuma Tombati, Tombe Nale, Chabe Nemase, Chabatine, never say, never the Anjibes in Gibet, and Gine, Antamati Tombe in to my team. New Junigal, she was on board. So in the same way that we undergo these changes of coming into existence, remaining for some time, and then go out of existence, well, this similar, in a similar way, this world around us, so the world we live in, the universe we live in, uh, undergoes certain cycles in a similar way. So we, of course, are the inhabitants of this universe, of the different worlds and so forth, and we undergo these stages of birth, um, birth, death, intermediate state, and then again, birth, etc. But then there's also the phenomenon of the different worlds of this universe, the different existences, the different planets. There are four stages usually described. So stages from the point of view of the material objects that come into existence and so forth. So when you talk about the elements, for instance, the four elements so the four elements being um, the, the air, air element, or wind element, as it's called. And then you have fire element, water element, and uh, earth element. Now, first, there's the time before a new planet comes into existence. There's nothing. It's a period of nothing. There's no elements there. No coarse elements there. But then what is described is that there's first just air, there's just, well, wind, uh, sometimes it's translated as wind or, or air, if you like, the air element. And as that moves, then, as it's described in, this, in the text, the next element that arises is warmth, fire element, or warmth is this fire element. And the next is the water element, so then there's moisture. And from air and warmth and moisture, then coarser objects such as the earth element, so coarser uh, material forms evolve. Anyway, so it's really the interplay of these different elements that a new world comes into existence. So first there was nothing, a new world arises, then it remains for some time, and then it degenerates again. And again, a new world, a new planet, or happy, whatever you want to uh, call it, um, again, it comes into existence previously. It's not there. It comes into existence. It remains for some time, and then it goes out of existence. So this cycle is similar for living beings as well as for the world itself. Mm. Yes. So when we say at the time when there's nothing there, we're not literally saying there's really nothing there. Um, there's definitely the potential for something to arise. So there's not a planet there, there's not a particular world there, uh, but definitely the potential for a world to, to arise, that is definitely there. <laughs> now, coming back to the death of a person. Now, 
the process of death, like someone dying. There are different reasons why someone dies. It could be due to illness. It could be just that their life is exhausted, their lifespan is exhausted, whatever the reasons are. But the point is here that when a person's, person dies, they undergo eight stages. There are eight stages that are usually described. And one of them is the earth element uh, dissolving, the earth element uh, losing its, its ability to fully function, or the earth element dissolves, as it's usually uh, called. Mm. Uh, now, the first stage, the first stage is the stage when, as just said, uh, the earth element can no longer support the body and it dissolves. And the external signs, the, the external indication for the fact that the earth element is no longer functional is that the body loses its luster. It loses, it, it kind of, it, it uh, becomes thinner as part of the death process. So uh, second, uh, secondly, also the person loses the ability to see clearly. But there's also an inner sign. Uh, when the person who's dying has kind of a vision, like a mirage-like vision, you know, like when you see a mirage um, in a hot place, in a desert, for instance, you have this mirage-like appearance. That is the inner sign of the dissolution of what's called the earth element. Nyanu <coughs> Uh now then the next stage is then when the um when the next element which is the water element it loses its functionality so basically it's described that the um earth element dissolves into the water element the water element dissolves into the fire element and so forth so in that way all the elements use lose their ability to fully function and there are four stages of these eight there are four um, so Rupji won't go through all of them because there's because of the lack of time. But just to say briefly, um, what happens is the body changes as a result of that. The body undergoes these changes as a person slowly dying in the case of a slow death. So external signs such as the warmth of the body dissipating and so forth, the tongue being thicker and, uh, and so forth. And then also there are internal kind of visions that a person has, so appearances to the mind. Anyway, if you're interested in learning more about uh, these different stages, there is a book um, that His Holiness had uh, composed. He kind of oversaw uh, the composition of this book, or these, these four volumes, I should say. It's not just one book, but there are four volumes that are out now that ex ex explain this process uh, very extensively. So these books are called Science and Philosophy in the Indian Buddhist Classics. These are four volumes that have been translated into English. So if you're interested, you'll find a, a very um, extensive explanation of everything Rebushi just briefly mentioned in there. 
但南京王的协会呢龙南西的天赛的我们必须希望那个天主王的呃与你的协会与同样的南约协会的国也没有强国你常常听我们中国的天气今天他们主主位的协会但那个兄弟他们的天赛的主位的协会是多我抵抗的
so anyway, a, a person who's dying now undergoes these three stages that now follow, um, which are described as the stage of uh, white appearance, uh, red increase, and black near attainment. So these are subtler types of mind. They're subtler than our ordinary types of mind. And as the person undergoes them, there's the appearance of whiteness, the appearance of redness. And then there's like a, a black, it's like there's a there's like a nothingness, just a blackness. And eventually, after you've undergone, you've gone through these three stages, then there's the subtlest mind. The subtlest mind, which is described as the clear light mind of everything being empty. That's the literal translation of the Tibetan term that she just used. So it's that subtlest mind, it's the subtlest type of consciousness that can manifest in our continuum. And that kind of mind is free from any kind of negative emotions, from any kind of mental faults. It's totally free. It's a totally pure mind that manifests at the time of death. At the time of that, sorry, at the time of, at, at that time. So that's the death mind as it's called so that very subtle mind is totally pure however the body when you look at a, the body of the person who just experiences that very subtle mind this body seems to be a dead body in in in, in the sense that there's no heartbeat there's no blood pressure there's no physical activity that can be detected however the person still has consciousness still has a bind left in their body. So in the body, the body of the body is the body of 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 the Quran 一直让心,所以让我们没得意。Do and now, at the time when 
uh, the a person has reached this clear light mind. It's called the it's also described as the clear light mind of death. So when that manifests, when that is active, well, a person who's an advanced meditator, they can actually use that very subtle mind and meditate with it. So if they can use this mind and use it for their meditation, then that is described as tuktam, tuktam, like this death meditation uh, that some of you may have heard of. But anyway, this very subtle mind at that time, at the time of death, is accompanied by a very subtle energy wind, like energy, like a very subtle energy, like qi you like, if you, in the Chinese tradition. So this very subtle energy. And since it's a very subtle mind, it's a very subtle energy. And those are inseparably linked. In the tantric texts that give a lot of explanation on this phenomenon, they say they are of one nature, that energy and that subtle mind of clear light. They have one en energy, they have one nature, they're inseparably linked. Anyway, when that clear light mind and its accompanying energy, when there's some movement basically coming from the energy, when there's some movement, in that moment, the mind, that subtle clear light mind, separates from the body, which is the actual death. That's the actual moment of dying. And that also marks the first moment of the intermediate state. That is the first moment of basically taking on the existence of an intermediate being. Now, this intermediate being also has a body, but it's much subtler. It's described as a mental body. It's described as very, very subtle. It's it has all those sense perception, all the sense consciousnesses are active, but in the form of this very subtle body, a body that naturally has certain abilities that through the karmic force of this particular being um, has the ability to instantaneously go from one place to another. Um, it also has a particular color. The body has a, a certain hue. So if it's uh, a being who will be reborn in the future in, in human existence, then the, the, the shape of the body, the appearance of the body is that similar to that of a human. And it has like a, a, a yellowish, a, a golden kind of hue. Um, and then also in terms of uh, the way it moves, if that being is reborn, for instance, in the, in the human realm again, it moves more in a straight fashion. If it's reborn in one of the celestial existences, it moves more upwards. If it's reborn in a lower existence, such as an animal and so forth, it kind of moves downwards in its uh, movement. And such an intermediate state being doesn't remain for a very long time. Um, it remains for one day or two days, but not longer than seven days. And after seven days, it undergoes another kind of transition which is similar to our ordinary death as a person. It's not the same, but there's some similarity. And again, they may again come into existence as an intermediate being and remain for one day up to like seven days. And this process can repeat seven times, not more than that. So for about 49 days, they can remain in that particular uh, intermediate state. And since their body is very subtle, they don't need to, they don't eat food as such. They sustain themselves. They, 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 they their nourishment are, are smells, just smell. They, they, they get the, their nourishment through smell. They can see each other as well. And they can see human beings as well. But we, because they're so subtle, our sense consciousnesses don't pick them up. So uh, we can't see them. Oh, sorry. Got to mention one thing. Uh, so Rupshi said, anyway, all this is explained in the text called the Abhidhamma Kosha, or the treasury of the treasure of knowledge, the treasury of knowledge by Vasubandhu. In the third chapter, if you're interested, you can read about this in detail in this particular text, the third chapter of the Abhidhamma Kosha. Chiwa 
这个是我们的家庭,我们的家庭,我们的家庭,我们的家庭,我们的家庭,我们的家庭,我们的家庭,我们的家庭,我们的家庭,我们的家庭,我们的家庭,我们的家庭,我们的家庭,我们的家庭
practice in any way, never uh, do any contemplative practices and so forth, then at the time of death, we won't be able to utilize that. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, that was really profound. We definitely need more time. I'm sure everyone will agree with me. But unfortunately, in this mundane samsaric life that we live, <laughs> we have to uh, end this beautiful session. Uh, and now I will start the question and answer session. Yes. Hello. Um, I was just wondering about um, the near-death experiences. Um, many people um, say that they they were clinically dead, but actually they uh, had a, a, a different experiences with their mind. And sometimes they, what is interesting is that they they were looking at their body, so as if they were out of their body. So their consciousness was. Was what is, and then they, of course, they came back into life. So, how can you describe this experience? What what is it in in the Buddhist tradition? Uh, Azuni Kaji Milangi Ludi Songi Shulu Pandria Shulu Panduji Changantri, Ludi Yagnedi or so Tindig Negaji La Milangi Ludi Susu Lutu Tonyala Suva, Yoko Sudun Tone, Tindigi Kotabuji, Yon Chuoji, Yon Chuijis. So Rumpichi says it's difficult to say it's a hundred percent this, that, or the other, but um, it can be explained to a certain degree according to the Buddhist scriptures in the sense that you find the explanation of a dream body in that ordinarily when we're awake, when we're fully conscious, we need this body to exist. However, when we're, for instance, dreaming, our coarser mind is no longer active. It's a subtler type of mind that is now active, which means our consciousness can actually leave the body it doesn't have to depend on this coarse body. It can leave the body and in that way look down upon its own in its own body, basically. So this would be similar in this case here, where a subtler mind becomes active, a subtler mind has manifested, and so this kind of dream body may arise so that the person leaves that body and can actually look down on themselves. Mm -hmm. That would be an explanation that would be given here. <laughs> 장자르베두지낭다나고로 now, this master, when he was in uh, China, at the time when he was in China, um, he was quite tired. He, he wanted to read the scriptures, but he was too tired to do it. And he had certain uh, meditation ability, deep concentration and so forth. So what happened was he fell asleep and he experienced what we would call lucid dreaming. He was aware that he was dreaming and what happened was he left his body basically with this kind of uh, dream body and he started to read the scriptures. Now he was, he was clear enough to actually read the text with this dream body. So in his, sorry, in his biography, uh, this is mentioned. I'm a medical doctor. I declare death very often. 
Uh, may I ask a practical question? It's not a philosophical question. Can you put it a little closer? So my question is practical question, not a very philosophical. So it's holiness, His Holiness has an opinion about <clears throat> brain dead patients. Mm -hmm. So people who are brain dead, yes. uh, until I have a legal authority, I can't switch off the machine on them. Mm -hmm. So by the time they are brain dead, like medically brain dead, mm -hmm. and they are on the machine, yes. their heart and lung is working because of the machine. Yes. What is this, uh, where, what we think about the uh, stage of death? And second question is, again, quite relevant practically. How long they can see their body when they die? When I declare them death, dead, can they see the scene? Can, are they aware of the things happening in the medical ward, what people are talking, what they're doing? Uh, we try to be respectful, but uh, they, it's a hospital environment. They go to mortuary. Uh, so what happens Can that time? I just repeat the question to be sure I understood it correctly. Uh, yeah. So question one, one. is brain dead right. patient who's medically brain dead, kept alive with the machines. Yes. What is the status of that? Like what, what, the, what stage of death they are? Are they aware? Uh, are they outside or the inside? Are they dead or not? Or Yes. Yes. Okay. Second question. Second question. Are they aware of the environment when they're practically dead? When we switch off everything, how long they stay in the... Mm -hmm. in the physical environment. Chidang, Tere, Ud, Tongyagi, Sanga, Chie, Du, Ganda, Shi, Wu, Sikro, Shi, Wu, De, Na, Wu, Shi, Wu, De, Na, Bu, Na, Wu, Le, Wu, Tongyagi, Bait, Chien, Du, De, Ganda, Chana, Chien, Du, De, Ganda, Tongma, Chie, Be, Kato, De, La, Long, Nang, Shi, Le, Ting, Se, Gi, Jong, Shi, De, Cha, Sang, Ting, Wu, Jong, Gi, Sang, De, Cha, Sang, Chie, Di, Gau, De, Cha, De, Gau, De, Gau, Su, Shi, Wu, Le, Zi, Yu, Ma, De, Di, Gau, Su, Dan, Dong, Dong, Ba, Shi, Sha, De, Kurangi Tandadi Lagmaris, Now, remember, she said, well, actually, when a person's breathing stops, when someone's breathing stops, that is usually described to be the fourth, the fifth stage. So the fifth stage, when the wind element dissolves into the consciousness element. Sorry, it's the fourth stage. When the wind element dissolves into the consciousness element. When the wind element is no longer functional, and now the consciousness element becomes active or it manifests more profoundly. So in that case here, yes, the person can no longer uh, breathe on their own, but it doesn't mean they're dead because consciousness is still in the body. And so they may get assisted. There may be assistance in terms of breathing facilities with machines and so forth being kept alive in that way because uh, they couldn't breathe on their own. They lost that ability. Um, and then I also checked with Rinpoche on, uh, like I said, it's not just a day because Rinpoche said, well, you know, then for a day or two, they may remain in that state. But then I added, well, they could remain for many years. And Rinpoche said, well, even if they remain in such a state for many years, uh, the reason they are not dead, from a Buddhist point of view, the sign for the fact that they're not dead, in other words, that there's still consciousness in the body, 
is that there is still some kind of radiance in the body. In other words, no decay. The body does not decay. As long as the body does not decay, consciousness has not left the body. So from a Buddhist point of view, there is still consciousness. So they have at least reached the fourth stage. Ramshi says he can't say for certain because everyone is different. Every person is different. However, Rinpoche says that at that state, so it's the from the seventh, from the fourth stage onwards, it would theoretically be possible for that person to take on a subtler body of what's called a dream body and theoretically see what's going on around them, leave their body and so forth. Hello, Dashtele, Rinpoche Dashtele. Um, let me pronounce your name. And um, Gesha Kellen Wampo. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming. It's fascinating talk. Um, I actually have a two question. I wonder if I allowed. First question is very um, straightforward. At the end, you mentioned um, although we will achieve this very subtle mind with very um, subtle energy that we can meditate during the battle time, uh, but without preparing yourself to this period that you won't be able to achieve it. But what sort of a practice that we're talking about here? Um, this is the first question. Second question is, um, um, you also mentioned about this book. Um, I just read down maybe part of the book. I'm quite keen to get hold of this book, Science and Philosophy of Indian Buddhism. Classics, of the Indian classics. Let me maybe just answer that question. Thank so the you. name of the book is Science and Philosophy in the Indian Buddhist Classics. Thank you. Science and philosophy in the Indian Buddhist classics. Actually, the English translator of two of these books are actually in the audience. She's right there in the back. Now, with regard to the preparation, how you can prepare, well, for instance, in the tantric texts, you find you have the tantric kind of practices, um, which are kind of yogic practices of meditation of deity. So in the context of these meditations, there are also times when you visualize you're going through these dissolutions. But even without putting it in this kind of tantric context into these advanced, pra advanced practices, even just meditating on death and impermanence, if you meditate on these stages, the way Rinpoche described them and they're also more in a more detailed fashion described in the book Rinpoche mentioned. If you become familiar with these, then when you die, it's like, you know, like when you meet someone you're very familiar with. It's a bit like that. You're familiar with these stages and you're able to recognize them and thus utilize them effectively. Thank you, Rinpoche, for sharing your wisdom with us. It's an honor to be in presence. It's an honor to be in presence of someone at your level of attainment. Uh, I wanted just to ask you, Rinpoche, what is your advice for someone who doesn't fear his own death, but he's facing or he's losing a loved one? How can he best prepare for that because he's feeling afraid? Thank you. Uh, Chiwa 
So Rinpoche says that, well, actually, it's important to reflect on the fact that death and dying is part of life. That is just part of life. But with respect to this loved person, it's very important to show them all our love, to give them all our love, to console that person, be with that person, help that person, and give all our assistance and all our help. That would be really important to us to do whatever time we have left with them to give our everything. But at the same time, also to reflect on the fact that this is just a natural stage. It's just, that's just how things are. This is just, that's just part of existence, part of reality that we one day we all have to die, even if we don't want to. So to become familiar with this fact over and over again, that this will happen at some point, uh, that might, might help. And Dick, so what's also important is in this situation that now this person that you you would try to help in this situation you take responsible responsibility for so um that it's important in their presence while they're dying that even though you're worried and even though you're upset not to show that in a in a in an extreme way in front of that person in the sense that well of course you want to help them however um for them it's also important to have a peaceful and and happy death so to 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 you know be able to go in a certain fashion that's beneficial for them and if you're really unhappy and really sad in that moment, without wanting to harm this person, that you may actually harm them because they start getting worried, they get concerned. So not being able to let go, basically, could become an obstacle. And so Rinpoche advised that you don't manifest, like in front of them, you know, like not being able to let go and being too depressed, et cetera, about, uh, about this uh upcoming death and so when she advises to sh not show that in such a fashion but make it easy enough for that person to let go thank you very much for your informative and interesting talk i have two points if i may specific points the first is as i understand it i hope i understood this correctly uh you refer to a state arising called clear mind and uh you then said i think correct me if i'm wrong that there was uh, an interaction with energy at that point. And I'm interested to know whether the energy is self-generated or whether it's external, which then impacts on the clear mind, and if so, where it comes from. And then secondly, you refer towards the end of the three trajectories uh, as to where the being would go up, if I'm crude about it, up, level, or down, to put it crudely. And I'd like to know whether your your view is that those 
trajectories are influenced by what happens at that stage or whether they are predetermined by what happened when the, the being was in the body before death, as it were. Uh, the uh, Longer, Tangi Chitangi Pado, you were the Kanda Kansangi, Rivet Chevachi to work, Carasolo di Gala, Chiong Hashi, Chiong Hashi Timba Yuba, Tana Shingi, Design in the TJ Euro, Nimbe say, not so did you saw Rivetone, Ni Shega Kubi Sunday, Ni Shega Save Sunday, and Dika do the Chiot and the Chichi Sine, Chiong Machin and Yungudo, D Talang, the Dinah Chiang, and David Tony Chiong Hashi the Cheva Kanda Kansachi to work. George Lemba in a DCG in a DGO Shima D, Chidara to the Chibi. Tia Umarada. Dealer Shiji, Gisadi, Missashin Dachi, Gio Nas, Sunda, Yamin the Jacobin Dachi, Yamin the Namishin Dachi, Gio in the Gala, good dinner, dinner pagan drugo. Tiparula, Batan Shabshi, Batu say, Sikuna Pamatus, Parula, Ruby Cup with the Badus. Sama, uh, now, with regard to your first question, um, when we talk about this clear light mind, well, that's the subtlest. It's an extremely subtle mind, and it, it it's inseparably linked to what we call energy. But these are just terms that are applied to certain functions. Now, from the point of view of movement, from the point of view of this mind being able to physically move, we say energy. From the, point of, from the point of view of this entity being able to perceive an object, we call it a mind. So it's just a, a matter of perspective. And we say they're inseparably linked in that they're one nature, one substantial entity. And they're inseparably linked, which means that it doesn't come from somewhere outside. This energy, it's like if you have the existence of the subtle wind, if you have, sorry, the existence of the subtle mind, you have, you necessarily have the existence of that energy that cannot be separated from it. So they only exist together in answer to your first question. And in, <coughs> excuse me, in answer to your second question as to why this intermediate state being sometimes moves forward, up or down, well, Rinpoche says, we distinguish between phenomena that are obvious and then phenomena that are hidden to our awareness at this point and very hidden. Now, this is something that to our mind right now is very hidden. It's very difficult for us to understand at this point. And we rely very much on the descriptions in, this, in the texts given by the Buddha on this phenomenon. So with the Buddha himself having said, well, at that point, you move up, down, and so forth. Um, but there's also a way to establish it, to apply reasoning, to apply 
uh, in particular experience, because there's been some um, research on uh, kind of putting people in some kind of hypnotic state, hypnotizing them. And then in that state, they can have memory of past lives, of past events that go beyond this existence, where they've also mentioned this phenomenon. So in those states, using that, for instance, as um, a means to understanding it better. But anyway, Rinpoche said that these beings move makes perfectly sense because they go from being, if, you die, if I die in this body and I'm reborn somewhere else, obviously this intermediate state being has to move somewhere. Uh, and then I check, I ask again, but why going up and down? And Rinpoche says, well, yes, I'll explain this now. So basically, it's very difficult to say why it is like that. It's just the nature of this particular being moving in such a fashion. And again, in this at, at this point, we just uh, rely on what the Buddha explained. In that yeah. Is it not a manifestation of karma at that point? Then? Pardon? Is it a manifestation of karma at that point? Oh. So Rubishi says, no, it's difficult to say that this is due to the karma of that person. It's just the nature of that kind of existence. And it's through kind of some beings who have like this clairvoyant kind of ability, uh, they can actually perceive that. But yeah, to say it's karma would be difficult for what she said. Just a little much here to Any, um, I'll speak in Tibetan. Perhaps yes, Anila can translate you. last oh, time. Um, ナンバーツケディガンナカンデスチゴウルセ。ラウンタンガラヤ、ペバインデュガリアティアニマレタワマレロエンデネカシカシンデラプチョエンダメドジヨワタセントパサムサムデネテズンデジュングドワ。ア
Any Pabo de Tungalong bed, be u in the she sassy in the Nanshu Lula, turned shoot in the Imbicola, Casamaja Lava Chamber in the Nanshu Tendi Gala, Nanshi de Lugu Turkish when he had Temper in a Yahoo Rodis. Casamaja Lava Chamber the Mela Matuada in the Ungur Tiji in a Tungin to the Nugris in Sungoris, um, Nambeg into Tanji Prevegi, Sujing into Tana Luga Chila, Tundu King, me Chila, Denny K, Jenny Moya, the Tichi woman. So the question is basically that if someone dies uh, and you don't have, for instance, monks and nuns in the vicinity who can perform certain rituals, what can we personally do uh, to benefit this person to help them during their death, right? Like, what can we do? That's just how I've understood it. Is that right? And so in answer to this question, Rimba, she said, well, uh, it's, not it's not absolutely necessary to have monks and nuns around to perform the rituals. There's a lot we can do ourselves. Uh, so, of course, if there's some there, I mean, that would be good to perform certain. But we can also do a lot ourselves to assist a person in that process of dying. Uh, in that, for instance, we can recite certain prayers, we can recite mantras, the Buddha's mantra, Tara mantra, praises to the Buddha, praises to Tara, and so forth. So anything that when they're in this semi-conscious semi kind of state, they may actually hear what is being recited. And similar to someone who likes music and when they hear their favorite song, they're, they're happy and peaceful. So in this case, for a practitioner, someone who's, and this was in particular for someone who follows the follows Buddhist practices, who has faith in the Buddha Dharma. So for that person, when they hear uh, these prayers, these mantras and so forth, faith may arise in their mind. A mind of refuge may arise, which of course is helpful in terms of keeping the mind calm and, and keeping the mind in the right direction. But what is also really important on top of oneself reciting these prayers, these mantras and so forth, is to keep calm, not to cry out loudly and, and, and um, kind of like scream and cry and, 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 and show your, your grief in, in such a way that it may disturb the person in that state. So according to the scriptures, it's important to not upset this person who's dying which it may upset them if someone is grieving greatly and they're screaming and, and crying out loudly. So in some traditions, that's in, in the Chinese tradition, that's done sometimes that they do cry loudly and so forth. But in the Tibetan tradition, that is not emphasized. I mean, in fact, it's, it's said to be the opposite. Keep very quiet and not to touch the person, not to touch them in the sense of not disturbing them. In that process, like now when they are dying, to not disturb the body um, in a in a in a in a violent and a forceful kind of way. Why? Because the person is in that process of the body of the consciousness leaving the body, and it's emphasized that the body. It's it's considered to be important that the the consciousness leaves the body through the crown of the head. But if we move the body violently, if there's too much movement, if there's too much, um, too much disturbance, the consciousness may leave in a different way, which could actually harm the person. So to summarize, to keep the environment calm and peaceful, calm and peaceful without disturbing the violent, the, the dying person and creating also a state of peace. Uh, for, for their mind, I mean, to, to help them to create a peaceful state of mind so they can die in such a way is very important. Rimsilatisle, <laughs> Adore 
你说的这些东西,我说的这些东西,我说的这些东西,我说的这些东西,我说的这些东西,我说的这些东西,我说的这些东西,我说的这些东西,我说的这些东西,我说的这些东西,我说的这些东西,我说的这些东西,我说的这
Uh, it is a pleasure to see you all today at Tibet House Trust this year annual uh, talk series. Thank you all for showing interest by joining us today. Your presence here uh, boost our confidence in organizing such event. Being a Tibetan, we have heard uh, from our parents and elders uh, saying there is 49 days, we say uh, in Tibetan, Shegu, uh, during the Bharto period, the, trans the intermediate period. And uh, we, were we are told that soul travels uh, to different places um, where it had been when alive. And there are many rituals, and one uh, which was discussed in the question that uh, we um, to offer food like sur in Tibetan, uh, the smell of uh, the subtle mind, uh, feed, uh, to feed subtle mind, the smell of some burn uh, incense. So it was so fascinating to listen to Rinpoche today. I hope you, you all have enjoyed the talk. I would like to express our deep gratitude to Young De Rinpoche for a very insightful talk. Rinpoche has been so kind to accept not only to speak to uh, this event, uh, uh, Rinpoche is also sp uh, speaking uh, to one more event which we are going to have on this Sunday in uh, Stratford, uh, where Rinpoche will be speaking to Tibetan student uh, youngsters at London School of Tibetan Language and Culture. Uh, which is run by Tibet House Trust. So um, we are very proud to have so many uh, young lamas and Rinpoche, it's like uh, Venerable uh, Young De Rinpoche, who uh, works really hard in preserving the distinct uh, Tibetan uh, Buddhism uh, language, which is uh, struggling for its survival uh, due to um, Repression by Chinese government for more than uh, seven decades. And uh, I would like to thank um, Kishima Kesan Hamula for the wonderful translation job there. It has been a great help. Uh, we indeed honored and happy to carry out this annual talk series successfully, considering uh, earlier what our representative have mentioned in his speech, that uh, considering His Holiness making less visit to abroad due to his age, it has become more important to do more to spread His Holiness message of love and compassion and to save this culture of love and peace, which is, as, as I said, struggling for its survival due to continuous repression of uh, Chinese government. Tibet House Trust, I, I will not uh, explain more about our charity because our uh, representative has already explained our uh, trust. So uh, it is due to support of our, of our sponsors and friends like you that we are able to came this far and Tibet still need your support. We need your support. So if you want to know more about our trust and activities, you can find more on that, uh, on the leaflet, which we have put on the table near the door, uh, exit door. So if you can uh, donate, then uh, there is a form uh, on the leaflet. Uh, if you can donate, then please. Uh, we really appreciate that. And there's another leaflet, which is on His Holiness for Commitment, which is very nice with pictures. You can, you are free to take that as, as well. Uh, last but not the least, I would like to thank uh, Jamia Buddhist Center, who is organizing uh, Rinpoche's tour to London. Uh, we see many uh, programs uh, you have lined up uh, during this tour. We wish you all the best. And uh, many thanks to Regents uh, College team, Jackie and uh, Sam, and our volunteer, uh, Desela, for their support. Hope you all had a very nice time tonight. Please share, uh, share what uh, you have learned, uh, if possible. Thank you so much. Now, uh, I will close this program by inviting uh, Representative uh, Sunam Farsila.
to offer Kata to Rinpoche and uh, Gishima Yesanabula. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.